Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. MQTT is used everywhere, especially in home automation projects. But also in my recent LoRa experiments I have used it. With the arrival of the new $10 Raspberry Zero with Wi-Fi capabilities, there are no more excuses to build a small MQTT server for everybody. You find many videos explaining the setup and the principle of MQTT. I will place a link in the description. In this video I will set up a MQTT scenario and show you how it works and will also show you the effects of quality of service or QoS settings, explain the last will and keep alive and show you which fits best for your MQTT scenarios. With this know-how you can set up your devices exactly as needed. And in addition you see note red in action. But before I would like to share something important for this channel with you. Most of my videos get only for about 10% of the views a like. So I ask you for a small favor. If you like this video please do not forget to press this fabulous button on your screen. It really helps the channel. Believe me. But now let's get started. MQTT consists of one server called Broker and many clients connected through a network. In this video we will use a scenario with a Mosquito Broker and a Raspberry Pi, which are the de facto standard in the world of small devices. Because the Raspberry is cheap and Mosquito is even free of charge. On the client side you can choose between the PubSub library and the async MQTT client library. Today I use the second one because it is very easy to use. To understand the concept let's compare MQTT for a moment with YouTube. YouTube would then be the broker and you and I would be clients. The channels can be compared with topics and the videos are the messages. You and me have a channel with our name and we can publish videos or not. We also can subscribe to channels. We even could create more than one channel if we have different topics to present. If we publish a new video in one of our channels its subscribers automatically are informed about this fact and we can watch this new video. Everybody can upload as many videos as he wants and can subscribe as many channels as he wants. The only thing we have to agree is that we use YouTube. That's it. Other than in YouTube the topics in MQTT have a special format. They are words separated by slashes. You are free to choose the number of words and the number of slashes. So you can structure these topics as you want. For today I built the following scenario. A simple Sonoff switch subscribed to a topic called Lab Light main switch. This device publishes the topic lab light main feedback. As soon as the switch topic receives the payload on, it switches the relay on and publishes on on the feedback topic. Like that we can see if there is a problem somewhere in the communication because then we will get no feedback. Now we need another client to connect to the broker to visualize the feedback topic and toggle the switch. In reality this would be my PIR sensors. But for experiments I need a more flexible tool and I use another de facto standard for that. Node Red. This is an awesome tool and if you continue watching you will see why. So let's start with Node Red. Here we see two flows. The first can publish an on and off message to the switch topic and the second can show us the message published on the feedback topic. That's all. Because its handling is simpler I simulate the Sonoff with a Node MCU board with an LED. The sketch on this board is very simple. It has only a setup part and nothing in the loop. In the setup we define everything needed. We connect to our Wi-Fi and then define a function for all things MQTT is capable of. We tell the sketch that it has to call a method or a function called onMQTTConnect if it connects to a broker. 
that it has to call a method on MQTT subscribe, if we subscribe to a topic and so forth. At the end of these definitions, we define the server address of our Raspberry and the port of the Mosquito Broker. Because we are in our internal net, we use no encryption. So the standard port is always 1883. In addition, we have to define keep alive, clean session, last will, client ID and username and password. For the moment, I do not use username and password and we will come back to the other parameters. The last statement in the sketch is the connect statement and now the magic begins. We look now first at serial. The ESP connects to Wi-Fi and to the MQTT broker and then nothing happens. As soon as I press on on node red, the ESP receives a message and switches the LED on. And it happens extremely fast. Why is that? Let's look what happens when we connect to the broker. In this case, we instructed the sketch to call the on MQTT connect function. There it subscribes to the switch topic. We could subscribe also to other topics like a second switch topic if we have a son of dual. If you remember, we instructed the sketch to call on MQTT message every time it receives a message from a topic we subscribed to. This function prints first all message details for analysis. Because our client receives messages for all subscribed topics, we have to filter our particular topics. This is done by a strcmp command. We have to use this particular syntax because this library works with character arrays as strings. If our message belongs to our main switch topic, we switch the relay. Here it is the red LED accordingly and publish the status of the relay on the feedback topic. That's it. The onPublish function just writes a message and the on disconnect function reconnects to the broker if we lost connection. The on subscribe and on unsubscribe functions have nothing to do in this scenario. If we go back to node red, we see the feedback message, which is as expected on or off. So everything works and I could stop the video now. But because I'm Swiss, the fun just starts now. Let's assume the son off is not working. So we switch it off. I press the reset button to block it completely. If I press now on or off on the node red, nothing happens, not at the son off, which is obvious, but also not on the feedback topic, also obvious. But what if the ESP was not dead but the connection did not work only for a short moment. Then we also would lose our message. Not good. This is why MQTT has the quality of services or QoS levels. Currently I work with QoS 0 as we see in the sketch and in node red. Let's now change the level to QoS 1 in node red. Level 1 means that the message will arrive even if we have a disconnected communication for a moment. So let's try the same thing now with QoS 1. It still does not work. The LED stays dark after I switch the ESP on again. So obviously it is not sufficient when we select QoS 1 on one side. We need it on both sides. Now we try again. I switch the ESP off and push on. After a while, when I switch the ESP on again, the LED really goes on. And I also get the feedback, even if we only work on QoS 0 on this topic. This is because the feedback topic is only published after the ESP is on again, and the broker is anyway always on. So the topics across unreliable connections always have to be on QoS 1 if we want to make sure that they arrive. 
and we have to select QoS1 on both sides, on the broker and on the client. At least in this scenario. It might be different in other scenarios where the ESP is the publisher. But I think it does not hurt anyway. But what is QoS2? QoS2 makes sure that the message securely arrives like in QoS1, but in addition it makes sure that the same message arrives only once. To achieve this, during publishing, a packet ID is added to the message, and this packet ID is then checked by the receiver. It has to be said that QoS2 in general does not survive a loss of power, because the receiver will lose its references during this power down cycle. But anyway, I cannot imagine a scenario where I would need QoS2. Maybe some viewers have more information about that. Now, what is keep alive? The client regularly sends a I am still alive message to the broker, even if it has nothing to transmit. This time is specified in seconds. And what happens if the broker does not receive a sign of life during this period? Then he assumes that his client passed away and sends out a last will testament message. This message is prepared by his client and transferred to the broker, of course, when the client still is alive. The client also communicates the topic where the last will will be transmitted. With this, the counterparts can decide what to do. For example, to execute an emergency shutdown or to switch to a safe procedure. With this last will, you can also trigger an SMS message to the support desk. As far as I understand, the clean session flag can be used to simplify the communication. I always had it ticked. Then the set client ID parameter can be anything but blank. I was not successful with clean session not ticked. Maybe somebody can bring some light in this matter. The retain flag should save all unsent messages if the connection to the client is down. Of course only in QoS 1 or 2. But with Mosquito and in the current scenario, this flag has no visible function. The messages are retained at the broker and sent after the reappearance of the client in both modes. So, with QoS 1, we do not lose messages, even if we miss more than one. Cool! So summarized, MQTT connects one broker with many clients. Communication is always between two clients. It never starts at the broker. This is why I use Node-RED as the opposite client for my Sonoff switch. With the arrival of the Raspberry Pi Zero with Wi-Fi, we can build our MQTT broker for less than $20 using Mosquito broker software. Node-RED is a perfect companion for MQTT. It is also free and runs on the same Raspberry Pi. On the ESP, we have the choice of two different MQTT libraries, PubSub and Async MQTT Client. Today I used async MQTT client. The programming of a sketch is quite simple. Decide on the topics you want to publish or subscribe and subscribe the needed topics in the onMQTTConnect method. Code into the method onMQTTMessage what you want to do if your device gets a message from a subscribed topic. Quality of service or QoS levels can be used to create the right behavior of your devices. QoS 1 is good for most scenarios, because your device get your messages also in case of short communication problems. The keep alive and last will functionality is a good way of alarming you if your devices somehow do not work anymore. We were able to create a working sketch for a Sonoff device with just a few lines of code. As a goodie, I extend our Node-RED flow with a last will flow and test if it works. 
see or hear what happens if I kill the ESP. Please help me, I have problems. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. In future episodes I will connect a PIR sensor, a TTN sensor, a simple button and Amazon's Alexa to this scenario. So stay tuned. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.